Hello everyone, my name is Lucas. I also go by Terror King, Bionic Eyeball, and Neo Proteus. I'm going to be showing you a quick tutorial on how to make cameras in the StarCraft II Galaxy Editor. For those of you who do not know how to get into the Galaxy Editor, you just right click on the icon for StarCraft II, open file location, you'll see I've actually made myself an icon over there. I'm going to try and make this tutorial as noob proof as possible, so I'm going to go in the old fashioned way. Alright, now I'm not going to bother um, loading up any maps or uh, making any um, actual match rules to this. Uh, creating cameras in the uh, Galaxy Editor is very useful if you want to start up a machinima or just get a more dynamic view. But first, we have to create something for the player to look at. So, I'm going to create a battle cruiser. I'm going to create a few archons. And give the Zerg some love and make some hydralisks. Yeah. Okay, now that we have something to look at, you want to press spacebar to get out of your um, unit creation tool and into your unit selection tool. Let's say I don't necessarily want a hydralisk right underneath my uh, battle cruiser. That's going to be really inconvenient. I'm just going to press delete and get rid of him. All right, now the basic camera controls for the editor are that you right click and drag and you can pan the camera around like so. If you hold alt, you will move the camera up and down on the z-axis. If you hold control, you can rotate the camera. And you can get some very dynamic camera angles by just simply rotating the camera and getting a nice view of the horizon there. Uh, if you hold shift, you will zoom in and out. Alternatively, you can use the mouse wheel. It does the same thing. And if you press the middle mouse button, or uh, press down on your mouse wheel, it will reset it back to a default camera position so that you can easily get back to viewing things the way you would view them in StarCraft. Anyway, uh, to start off by giving you a dynamic camera angle, we want to actually set up a dynamic camera angle. So, I'm going to get a nice little view of this hydralisk over here. And that just requires me to move the camera. It's normally a lot smoother than this, but that's what I get for um, screen capturing a video and running it in high graphics mode at the same time. Let's get a nice little view of this Hydralisk. Hi, buddy. All right. Now we're going to go up to Cameras, or you can just press C, and Create Camera. And what that just did, basically, is it put a camera there to view the Hydralisk with. Uh, I'm going to set up another view, and let's take a look at this Archon here. Yeah, let's zoom in on him. Get a nice view of this Archon. Create another camera. And just for lulls, I'm going to view the underside of this battle cruiser. Yeah, it obviously does not like you doing this. Which is why it's um, messing up a little. And I actually want my camera to be above ground level, if I can. And that is the underside of a battle cruiser. You'll notice that they actually did make an underside. It's very detailed down here. And I'm going to create another camera. And then reset it back to a more standard view. Okay, now, that actually didn't do much. Uh, because... In order for you to view these cameras in-game and actually have a unit moving around on the camera, you're going to need to tell the game when to switch to that camera angle. And that requires you going into the Triggers menu. And th this is where things get a little bit more complicated. First thing you'll notice here is this Melee Initialization event. Basically, what this is telling the game to do is when the game starts, you do these. Game map initialization results in melee, set melee starting resources for all players, create melee starting units for all players, etc. You know how to read. And if I wanted to create a camera angle at the very beginning of a match, I'd just put it down here. Uh, because when the map initializes, it'll go straight to that camera angle. The only problem with that is that if you touch the mouse wheel, and I think this is a safeguard that they had put in for the uh, test documents, is when you scroll back, it will go back to a standard, very default camera angle. And from then on, you will have no way to get back to your uh, custom camera angle. What I'm going to do is tell the game to press a button 
or rather, when you press a button, it will go to that camera. So, I'm going to name this event Camera, and I'm going to go to Events, User Interface, Key Pressed, OK. And then I'm going to go to Actions, Camera, Apply Camera, and in case you ever just wondered how you get get uh, a lot deeper into this and know what each event does there's a little paragraph down here describing exactly what it does for example apply camera object is defined as sets a player's camera to a camera object if you choose to include target then the specified player's camera will also jump to the target point of the specified camera object otherwise only the camera object's properties will be applied to the specified player camera basically what I found out that that means is um, once the event trigger happens um, the result will be it will go to that camera. So in my case, I press a button, it goes to that camera angle. So I'm going to press OK there. Another thing that you'll notice is down here it's uh, talking about speed and velocity and uh, deceleration and all that. And basically what that's saying right off the bat is that no matter what you do, the camera will not teleport. Now, I imagine there is a way to make the camera teleport. I haven't quite gotten that deep into this yet. This is just a basic tutorial after I've figured it out, because there were no other YouTube tutorials that I could find describing how to do this. That means if you have multiple cameras set up, like I'm, going to, like I'm about to do, if you press the buttons rapidly, uh, your camera angle will hover somewhere in between them. If you have two cameras pointed in the same direction, and they're at different locations, uh, then when you switch between them, the camera that you see will pan between them, which is pretty useful if you want a uh, steadily panning camera. Anyway, before I go into the specifics of what to set these two um, event actions to do, I'm going to go over here and copy and paste. Basically, I've just created an, uh, an event over here, an element, for each of my cameras. That means that a different button is pressed, then a different camera is selected. So I'm going to go into user interface and go down here to say uh, where it says none and I'm going to set it to the number one. Now I don't typically advise setting it to a number because if you use control groups and it saves the selection of your units you'll see if it's uh, if that key is pressed then you'll not only save your units or uh, recall your units but you will also go to that camera angle. But I'm going to set it up for one for simplicity's sake here, specifically because I'm not going to be dealing with control groups in this video. Uh, normally I'll set them to the right side of the keyboard because I use the grid control scheme, um, so all of the keys basically on the right side of the keyboard are useless. And I know they will not actually do anything, but uh, like I said, for simplicity's sake I'm just going to set it to one. So, um, then I'm going to go to camera, and instead of default game camera, I'm going to go and switch it from function over here to value here, and then go to camera 1 and click OK. So I've just told when I press the 1 key, it's going to switch to camera 1 camera angle. So I'm going to do the same thing for camera 2. I'm going to um, tell it to when I press the 2 key, that it should go to camera 2. And when I press the 3 key, that it should go to camera 3. All right. And that's all well and good if you want a static camera angle, if you want a camera that does not react to anything that you are doing. I think you have some degree of freedom in panning that camera around or zooming in and out, but you can't really change its rotation at all. In order to have it follow a unit, uh, you need to create an entirely different event, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go down here to New Element. I'm going to go to Events. And I'm going to tell it that when I press the 4 key, that it's going to lock on to a unit and follow that unit around. I'm just going to go to Actions here. Go to Camera. 
and make camera follow a unit. And there are uh, commands for following other things, like um, follow an actor or follow a point. I'm just going to go follow a unit because that's the simplest thing to do. You can actively control a unit in-game. And I'm going to leave these settings as is. Once again, not doing anything specific, and copy and pasting this. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. When I did this the first time, I noticed that once you were locked on to that unit, there was no way to unlock. No matter if you tried to change camera angles, um, whatever you did, you would stay locked on to that unit. You couldn't really zoom in and out. Uh, the camera would pan around the unit rather than panning uh, straight forward, back, left, right. And the only way to get out of that is to actually have another event uh, to unlock. I'm going to tell this that when I press the 4 key, four, that it will follow a unit. And for this example, I'm going to use a hydralisk. So I don't actually know which hydralisk I just selected. It was one of five. Um, I imagine that there's probably a way to name your unit so that you can tell which is which. Um, I'll probably figure that one out later. And I'm going to tell this that when I press the 5 key to unlock. And that just means that the same event that you used for this trigger here, you're going to use for this trigger here, except leave it as no unit. Meaning that when you press the 5 key, it will lock onto no unit and preset to the default camera. So, I think that's it for now. Um, I'm going to load up the game and test this out so that uh, we can see that our camera angles are working. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice when the game loads up is that it'll immediately bring up this menu for Tide, which means that I didn't set up any rules for um, parameters of victory. I didn't actually create a game, I just created a few units to mess around with, which is exactly what I wanted to do. If you're creating a machinima, you don't necessarily need to set up game rules. It's kind of pointless. I'm just going to go ahead and click Return to Game and then go down here to where I had placed my units and see that I have my battle cruiser, my three archons, and my five hydralisks. And the normal camera controls in-game, you can use the mouse wheel to scroll in. You can pan around the camera by holding down the middle mouse button or the mouse wheel. You can use the arrow keys to move the camera around. Uh, or you can use insert and delete to rotate the camera to a very limited degree. But the whole purpose of this tutorial uh, was to create a camera angle. So that's exactly what I did. So if I press the one button here, I'm going to go over and see this hydralisk guy there. And, um, you know, I have a degree of freedom here with the camera. I can still zoom out, I can still zoom in. And if I press the two key, I'm going to go over and say hi to this archon here. If I press the three key, I see the underside of a battle cruiser. Go back to my standard view by uh, zooming back out. If I zoom in on this Archon here and press 4, I'm actually locked on to this Hydralisk, and the camera will follow this Hydralisk around wherever he moves. And since I'm using the standard command interface, I can actually order him to do pretty much anything, including kill another Hydralisk. Now, like I said before, there's actually no way to get out of this camera angle. If I press the first three keys, it doesn't switch the camera angle to something else. If I try and pan, it'll pan around him. And I can actually zoom in by holding down the middle mouse button, but that's not the normal means of zooming in. And that is why I created a sp command specifically for unlocking this camera angle. So I'm going to press 5, and now I have my freedom back! Yay! And if I press 4 again from up here, it will still follow him even from the default angle. So from any of those cameras, and even from this default angle, you can move the hydralisk. I hope you enjoyed the information. I'm going to show you one final thing here. If you go to Menu up here and go to Score Screen, which is what most people will do if they don't actually know the Alt F4 command, it's just going to take you back into the login screen for StarCraft II. And that requires you to do an extra step in order to get out of this game. So I'm just going to go place Alt F4, and uh, conveniently, Blizzard has put in a nice are you sure you want to exit StarCraft 2 command, and I'm just going to click yes and exit the program. So I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and found it very informative. Thank you for watching.